Hey Brick Maniacs, welcome back to another Designer Studio episode. We have another debut happening here on Brick Mania TV. This is Brennan, uh, and he designed the P39 Air Cobra. Kind of a unique plane to initially start, but we'll get to that later. First of all, tell me a little bit about yourself. This is obviously your first kit design for Brickmania, but you've been here for a while. Yeah, so I've been coming to Brickmania since I was really little. Uh, we moved to the Twin Cities, my family, about 11 years ago. Okay. And we were here when you guys were still doing your open houses, and mm -hmm. that was just the highlight of my month. Oh, cool. All the time I would come in here and just look at everything. It was always, I mean, there were, there were new things once in a while, but it was usually the same, but the spectacle Mm -hmm. of everything that of you guys... Of the Brickmania toy works. Exactly. Yeah. Everything you guys put on display was just amazing. It blew my mind. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I want to be like that. <laughs> <laughs> but then again, I also thought to myself, but how am I going to make a career out of that? And I never really thought too thoroughly, but they're making a career out of that. So sure. it's possible. Mm -hmm. So I spent more of my time just kind of, t uh, you know, fiddling around with my own Legos, going, making my own things. Never really coming to a point where I'm mimicking things so mm -hmm. much, or, or never coming to a point where I'm actually trying to make things to scale or perfectly, I'm more mimicking elements of things to create new things. Sure. And it was, <laughs> it wasn't great. It's a process, Exactly. Right. But then I finally come here and I spend some time uh, first doing production and eventually coming and doing a lot of the instructions that you guys have seen over the last couple mm -hmm. of years. And um, I got to see every little kind of detail and idea that went through Cody's and, and Dan's heads. And I went, oh, that's how you do that. That's mm -hmm. how you make that. And as that started happening, I'm like, maybe, maybe I can do this. Mm -hmm. Sure. Started out trying to do a uh, mosquito, mm -hmm. actually, uh, just a few months before the actual mosquito came out. <laughs> <I'd>, <laughs> that was you got inspired by EAA, too, when you saw it? That, that too. So? Yeah, yeah right. exactly. Seeing that thing I was, was just pretty like, neat. Oh, Mm -hmm. I know that's what happened to Cody. He literally came back and was like, Dan, I'm doing a mosquito. Got to, got to build it. <laughs> I, I was partially inspired by my dad. It's my dad's favorite airplane. Oh, very cool. He's, very cool. he's a pilot. He, uh, or, you know, part-time, mm -hmm. non-commercial pilot. Sure. It's kind of his hobby. But he loves the mosquito. Mm -hmm. It's just an amazing, the wooden wonder. The wooden wonder, He's indeed. always adored it. And I was like, yeah, I'm going to do that for him. And it was a very intense project to take on for a first try. I was mm -hmm. like, okay. Brought in what I had. They were like, it's not to scale. You know, you could do this a little better. And I'm like, okay, maybe I took on something too ambitious. So I went, well, let's, I still want to make something really cool and unique mm -hmm. that I can share with people, but what do I do? And I thought of this thing. It's so strange, but it's, it's really a pretty airplane in my mind. It, yeah. It's very bullet-like, mm -hmm. in, in, if you've seen it That's in real That's a great life. way to describe it. It's absolutely bullet-like. It's bullet -like. just so sleek, mm -hmm. and I, I've always loved that, but it just didn't always perform as well. And so, because it didn't get the spotlight, people didn't hear about it so much. Right. It was like, that's the one I want to do. Interesting. So, one, once you knew you were going to be creating this as an actual kit for Brickmania, yeah. and, you were, and you were building it at your desk, working on the l drive, uh -huh. etc., did the... Did the pressure amp up a little bit? A were you, were little, you realizing you were going to have your name on the package and here we go, this it, is going to happen? It was a little freaky, I'm going <laughs> to admit I'm gonna admit that. I spent a lot of time like either sitting at it or tweaking things and I would often go over to Dan and to Landon and be like, what do you think of this? Well, if he did this, okay. Mm -hmm. the, there, were, there were a lot of aspects in this that I will, I will show that were, there were the, 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 ch the children of Oh, this has got to be good, because if it's not, right. like, it, obviously, it's a first kid. Mm -hmm. I can recognize that in hindsight. Mm -hmm. It's the first one, but that doesn't mean you don't want it to be exactly, the best you can create. Exactly, right. I want to give it my all because mm -hmm. I don't want to be giving, especially to you guys, something that's. You feel there can yeah. still be improvements upon. It. Yeah, if yeah. if I look at it and go, that's just it's not good enough mm -hmm. for them. Well, talk, talk to me, now let's dive into the model a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, just walk me through some of the techniques, some of the processes, the areas that hung you up a little bit. We talked a little bit about the nose, um, mm -hmm. and then we'll go into that awesome sticker sheet and, and some of the other history There's about so the aircraft. But you, you are right, I mean, this is a mm -hmm. super sleek looking plane, there's a lot of angles going everywhere. I mean, how did it come together? Well, for one thing, uh, it had to balance on three gear, mm -hmm. which was an interesting aspect because 
it's it's very it's very heavy in the tail right. where it was initially. And it doesn't look like you have room for a weighted brick necessarily in the nose. No, I, I was actually in a uh, suggestion from my dad while I was sitting at home, mm -hmm. just kind of thinking. He's like, "You have that weighted brick, couldn't you fit it?" No, not quite. Yeah, especially not when you want to fit this uh, this gear because this gear folds in. Mm -hmm. And if you want to fit that in there, you don't really have room. There's like no room. Exactly. Yeah. It needs to all be, come on. So and we heard a little bit yeah. about Cody's struggles with that, with the Schwab, about how coming back this next time, you know, he really wanted to make room for that weighted brick in the front so that that tricycle landing gear worked out. This being such a smaller plane, you don't really have that option. And so you just have to get it to a point where it does balance the, exactly. the way you want it to sit. Yeah. And so it was a lot of, using a lot of plates in the nose mm -hmm. and a lot of bricks in the back because mm -hmm. I mean when you think about it from a logical standpoint three plates on top of each other there's more plastic there than Solid. The, yeah Correct. than the open si uh, mm -hmm. underside of a brick when when this thing finally didn't just constantly do that right was just the greatest day mm -hmm. in 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 this creation process I was just like that was the one thing mm -hmm. that was and, and it was especially difficult because you've got to fit this prop in there as well yep and there's got to be room for that as well as folding the gear in. Because it has to be able to spin. Exactly. You can't just, have a you can't just, on the it can't just that sit can't there. Spin, it's right. awful if it doesn't. <laughs> okay, so we've walked through the plane, some of the functions, uh, the swooshability of it all, some of the building techniques. Now, it does come with two different sticker sets, some cool printed mm -hmm. elements. Um, let, let's cover some of the details and then we'll get into the history. So, right now we have it set up Lenly style, Lend uh, which was the majority of combat service that this plane was seen. Yep, so when you, when the reason most people don't hear about this thing is because it did not get a lot of praise over here in the US. Mm -hmm. um, Mostly was, because it just kind of was a little late to the scene or you know there were newer, bigger, better things Well yeah, the to a certain extent the um, the idea of this plane when it was designed it was built around, it's kind of like how the A-10 was built around its massive uh, you know minigun mm -hmm. that sits under that chin. This thing was built around a 37 millimeter Oldsmobile cannon. Mm -hmm. This is a thing about the same size as what you see on a Stuart tank. Sure. Which is kind of crazy to put on an aircraft. Um, and it's this automatic repeating cannon they want to put in the nose and they're like this is going to be a bomber killer right basically you're going to get up in that formation and one of those high explosive cannon shells is going to rip it apart mm -hmm. it's so easy the only problem was most of the bombing that was happening over say europe for example was at super high altitudes and out of this one's range and well. out of this one's range they had to they were going to put a turbocharger on it which uses a mix of the uh, the exhaust to give the engine more power it sure. pushes it back into the into the engine but they had to stick with a single stage supercharger which had a ceiling of about 15,000 feet whereas bombing was happening just above that at maybe 20 maybe 25,000 right. feet even uh, further and so it wasn't really effective over Europe mm -hmm. and when you don't have a lot of uh, in the Pacific you don't have a lot of the Japanese doing uh, high-level strategic bombing. Mm -hmm. You don't really have, or, or, or even low-level strategic bombing. Right. They're much more personalized. It's like, well, what are you going to do with that? Mm -hmm. Well, and the Japanese right away began using long-range fighters. Well, long, they weren't, you know, they developed it, but they were initially much more long-range than this, which would be considered right. a very short-term fighter. Exactly. And so, instead, we're like, okay, well, where do we, what do we do with this? Well, the Soviets need planes. Mm -hmm. We're doing Lend-Lease. Let's send it over there. And it turned out to work perfectly. Because, ground attack. Exact, well, ground attack and the fact that in Russia, it's kind of ineffective to do that whole strategic bomb an entire factory to pieces mm -hmm. because they kind of move it wherever they want. You need to pick out very particular targets. And so they did instead tactical bombing, which was mm -hmm. a lot of Stukas and JU-88s. It's a much more low level or precision dive bombing or level bombing stuff. Mm -hmm. And that's perfect for the P-39 because it's below that 15,000 feet and it's and its engine, the Allison, actually works really well within the Russian conditions, um, much sure. like their own engines over there. Cold and dry. Exact, <laughs> exactly. And so it just allows this thing to function at its peak efficiency over mm -hmm. there. And so, yeah, it tore through, tore through bombers, tore through fighters. It wasn't the most maneuverable or amazing aircraft sure. in the world. But when you send it to Russia, it does its job well. Very, very cool. So a, a widely unique aircraft here in the States that wound up being a, a successful and 
essential role played early in World War II. I mean, you can think about what would have happened if this wasn't available on Lend-Lease. Yeah. Just to have a plethora of planes to be able to send over. Exactly. I mean, you was, never know what would happen. Part of it. Right, yeah. exactly. Um, but we do also have uh, the American stickers included on this sheet here, so you can swap out the uh, the creation that you would like to to have. Yep. So we've got uh, we've got some of the the regular uh, blue and white stars mm -hmm. that you can put either on the sides and the wings. Um, but we also have these little dots here, and that is a reminiscent or uh, a remnant of the early war pattern that we used on our fighters mm -hmm. um, they used to have it, so that we had the red white and blue in there before we did stars and bars mm -hmm. um, it was the star with that dot right in the center oh, the only, oh very cool but the problem with that was when we started going to war with the japanese we needed to distinguish ourselves very very harshly from them because mm -hmm. they have that rising sun on the right. sides of their planes and having that big red dot sitting there is just inviting trouble. Mm -hmm. And so instead, we moved over to either using just the star in the blue background or the stars and bars from there. Mm -hmm. um, so three potential combinations of stickers depending on which P-39 you would like to make. Exactly. And um, that awesome shark mouth. And the shark mouth. <laughs> that, was, that was something Landon and I toyed with for quite a while. Mm -hmm. We were like, do we want to print it? Do we want to do a sticker? And Initially, in the very blocky configuration, it was going to work as a print, mm -hmm. and that was going to be super cool. The only problem was when I refined it a bit more and it got more sleek. Too many elements. There's so many parts mm -hmm. that it would have to go across. It would just be a nightmare to mm -hmm. print, and so we went with the stickers, and that also allows those of you who are like, oh, I'd rather not put the shark mouth on there. Yep. It means you don't have to go buying new parts mm -hmm. to to make it the way you want it. Yeah, I can understand that. So, And then uh, let's talk, a, so obviously we have some printed parts here on the wings, uh, mm -hmm. which is awesome, but then what I really want to talk about is this cockpit and that awesome printed gun sight. Okay, that was... That would, that's First a little, of all, yeah. nightmare for UV, but they got it done and it they, looks extra. They hit. got it done. Yeah, it looks fantastic. I'm very impressed with them, very pleased with this, um, and my condolences. <laughs> um, so yeah, this, uh, this is the, I believe it's the N3A gun sight. This mm -hmm. was a, a fairly common uh, reflector gun sight. That, this is kind of the beginning of, if some of you know, like the modern military, like the tactical hollow sights or whatever. Yep. This is the beginning Predecessor, of that. Predecessor, yeah, yeah, okay, cool. It's massive, it's bulky, it's like this big, and it has to sit way up front. And it's basically just a couple of mirrors and a plane of glass, just pointed out there. It's not very complex mm -hmm. to a certain degree. Um, and so you've got this this distinct kind of orange, reddish orange. Uh, let's flip that around yeah, so the camera guy can, see if you can, can get in on that. See if you can get that. Maybe tilt it up just a little yeah, like that. Yeah, just a little. Well, and you can, I love how you can see it from this angle and from that angle. I was really, really pleased that we actually managed to get that to work mm -hmm. because if it's like it doesn't make sense to put it on the front because that's not where it's showing up. Right. But at the same time, you want to be able to see it without having to like angle yourself around and mm -hmm. kind of open up the cockpit. So I'm really glad that it looks like that. Yeah, we managed functions. to get that to look great. Um, and that was just another byproduct of, I've got a lot of space in this cockpit, mm -hmm. and I want to make this super special and super fun and have a really unique piece that you can honestly use in, in a lot of planes. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is the same gun sight they actually had on the P-40. Sure. So if you wanted to, to upgrade that or, or make some space in your cockpit for that, definitely use that. Um, then, of course, as you mentioned, we've got the, the fuel caps mm -hmm. on the wings here. That was just a lovely little touch that Landon and I put on there. A couple of Brick Arms MGs underneath the wings. Mm -hmm. Yep, which are actually optional. Um, they're really easy to just pop right off and pop back on. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a later war version, so these are a couple of 50 caliber machine guns. Uh, earlier on, they had uh, 430s mounted in the wings, and even later on, they just removed the machine guns altogether and just stuck with Use that cannon. Mm -hmm. Use that cannon and technically two 50 caliber machine guns in the nose firing nice. through the prop. Okay. So, got a lot of amazing stuff going on there. And then, m one of my favorite little details is the carburetor intake, if you can see that yep. at the back here. Awesome printed element, I mm -hmm. totally agree. So, for, for a lot of planes, you've got that sitting, like with the Mustang, you've got that uh, sitting, I can't remember 
which one it is. It's got two scoops. You've got one sitting right in the chin, you've got one right under the fuselage. Right. One of those is the carburetor. It's been a while since I've no reviewed worries. that. The point is it's on the bottom. Exactly. This one, it's on the top. It's got that little flap on there so you can actually open it up and close it. Well, in real life. Mm -hmm. uh, but it looks like you can in there, which is cool to me. Um, and I always found that really interesting. I, I love just the configuration of this whole plane. Mm -hmm. Because you've got the carburetor here because it needs to feed into the engine, which if you can see the exhaust pipes here. It's sitting right behind it's the pilot. It's sitting behind Wild. the pilot. Because, and again, it's because you've got this cannon sitting in the front. Mm -hmm. It's like, gotta make room for it. Yeah, it's this massive thing. You've got room, for, you need room for the cannon, you need room for the wheels. Where does the engine go? Mm -hmm. You put it behind the pilot, run a crankshaft, under the under the floor of the cockpit and up to the front and it has these really unique doors here as well oh and they open wow look at that yeah so you with this aircraft again because this carburetor uh, intake is here and you've got this engine sitting back here you don't have room for a sliding canopy like on a p51 or a p47 mm -hmm. or anything like that because you it's going to bump right into this thing and so what do you do you put doors on it <laughs> And getting into my P39. You know. Exactly. <laughs> Ladies. Yeah, right. That's pretty cool. And I like that they function, too. I, you know, it's, it's hard to tell sometimes with the way those uh, crazy bar yeah. axle pin connection cockpits come together, what can exactly move and what's just clipped in place to kind of give it that look. Give it that look, and yeah. And that's really neat. Initially, it was, it was just one tile going across there, and mm -hmm. I figured that I could actually reinforce it right under here with these tiles on the sides mm -hmm. just fine. And allow that door to sit in there so that was a, a lot of fun little epiphanies yeah putting this thing together because this honestly went together as a pro as a self project it went together over about a year mm -hmm. um but once it finally kind of came into the limelight and it was like okay we're actually going to do this i spent maybe about a couple of weeks mm -hmm. refining and, and tweaking every little thing about this until i was like that's what I want to send to them. Awesome. Well, that's really cool, man. This is an excellent first model. Uh, we're proud to have it as part of the Brickmania lineup. Obviously, it's got to feel pretty cool to hold that package and, and, and see your name on there as <laughs> the designer. It's super cool. This yeah. was this was kind of the dream for me when I showed up here initially, mm -hmm. but I was totally content with sweeping floors from the beginning. <laughs> very, very cool. Awesome to see the, the, the journey that you've been on. We're looking forward to uh, what you what will contribute in the future. Um, but this kit also comes with this awesome minifigure. So now we're going to jump over to Landon, take a little bit closer look at the figure included with the P39. Yes. I guess the first thing that always stands out to me about this figure it would be this uh, the color shifting going on. It's 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 got that kind of like historically accurate uh, um, olive-ish color to yeah, it. Yeah, sure. Um, so again, speaking of that Lend-Lease thing, this um, this jumpsuit was actually, uh, I think, based very heavily on that the U.S. Navy mark. Uh, I don't remember the exact name of it, but the U.S. version uh, of this jumpsuit was also, um, from what I could tell, very similar cut to it. Yeah, sure. I don't know if it was actually given to the to the Russians or if they made their own like locally made uh, variant of it. Right. Very similar. Um, then you have the Soviet officer belt, um, and then uh, pilot's harness going around there uh, for that parachute. Um, a simple figure, but uh, kind of a standard little bit of a loadout here. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Very, very cool. Definitely one of those figures that uh, you know this this was a widely used plane in many intense battles early on, especially in the in the Soviet Union. Um, maybe you know a little downed aircraft pulling out his pistol and, and going and, and fighting his way back home. Some cool mocks. A lot of a lot of potential for the for the P39 uh, and this awesome figure. So thanks for going over that, Landon. That's very, very cool. Uh, so that will do it for the P39 designer's desk. Congratulations to Brennan on his first official Brickmania kit. Uh, definitely a very, very cool and unique aircraft to start things off with. I drove it into a hole. Oh, no. We'll see, uh, we'll see uh, what more is to come from him in the future. Um, otherwise, tune in next time when we take a closer look at another Brickmania kit.